Hello, my name is Miru Kim. I'm excited to share with you my work in practice number four, which is one of my long-term project series in nature since 2019. In practice is part of a video series that activates my subconscious expression. I question my relationship with nature by trying to understand it as a participant in it. I randomly choose a place to experience the materials. The place could be a hill with hundreds of years old pine trees as in my home South Korea or it could be a rocky dry desert with borders burnt by the sun in Arizona where I am currently staying. Place or object is inconsequential. Moving through space and experiencing time by shaping the landscape leaves a mark documenting the presence. When I work with clay, I feel I'm an extension of material deeply connected. It gives me a sense of healing. It releases suppressed emotions and provides comfort by freeing me from my inner world. When I touch clay, I experience the circular connection of myself to material world. I frame this inside-outside space by articulating the boundary between the two. I submit to chance and the nature elements in order to discover this relationship. Firm, harmonic, complex, and fragile. I awaken all of my senses while responding to the environment. Whether answering to the sounds of water flowing, insects buzzing, the touch of wind blowing, or sunlight warming the body. I open my whole sense of self to communicate through my own language. Hi, welcome to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. My name is Keith Kajak. I'm a third year graduate student in the art department. Um, welcome to my studio. I'm gonna to talk to you briefly today about um, my sculpture, Tower of Boxes, which was awarded um, the ISC Sculpture Award in 2021. Um, it, was, it was definitely a piece that was inspired by um, the pandemic. Um, it's made of cardboard boxes and it was, I was really thinking about ubiquitous materials and the way that I was getting my materials for a significant period of time um, during, during 2020 and uh, into 2021. Um, most of them came in the form of Amazon boxes or various other sorts of boxes. And um, simultaneously, I was also teaching, I was an instructor of record for uh, an introduction to art survey course. And um, I was thinking a lot about uh, artists and I've always been inspired by Brain Cousy and I um, created a, uh, a, a pattern, um, a box that sort of mimicked his endless column. And uh, I was thinking about the precarity of, of the, the things that we were leaning on at that time. Um, and it was, the, the tower was sitting on a, a pallet and the pallet was made of rigid foam and covered in uh, a wood grain contact paper. And um, I was sort of thinking about how objects um, are as empty sort of vessels. They, they look like the things that we think they are, but they're in fact something different. And since then I've really sort of um, held on to that sort of notion. So I'm exploring more objects, things that we um, interact with on a daily basis, mundane things, and I, I sort of see the mundane as, as magical. I'd like to say thank you to the ISC for this excellent opportunity to become part of this large sculpture community, to become um, part of a publication, 
uh, to have the opportunity to briefly share my work, my studio with all of you, and a thank you to the jurors for um, seeing value in my work. I really appreciate it. Hello, my name is Amalia Galdona Broche, and my piece, The Gazebo Grew a Skin, was recognized by the International Sculpture Center's 2021 Outstanding Student Awards. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Kentucky's MFA in Studio Arts program and currently live in Jackson, Mississippi, where I teach drawing, fibers, and sculpture as a visiting assistant professor of art at Millsaps College. I'm originally from Santa Clara, Cuba, but spent my adolescence in Jacksonville, Florida, where I then studied sculpture and art history at Jacksonville University. In my studio practice, I experiment with a variety of media, including textiles and sculptural processes, but have also incorporated video, performance, and installations to explore transculturation, displacement, and identities in diaspora. The Gazebo Grew with Skin takes the memory of a landmark from my hometown and rematerializes it in a new context. Over the past few years, I have been particularly interested in the relationship between the body and its surroundings, where we find shelter and what we seek shelter from. My work oscillates between the abstract and the figurative. Weaving, however, is a relatively new development. The word weaving can be translated as tejido in Spanish, but the word tejido is not exclusive to textiles and has multiple meanings, such as biological tissue, which is the most intriguing translation for me as a metaphor for the levels of organization of the body. The gazebo grew with skin relies on this wordplay, but takes into account that we encounter woven structures most often in the form of clothing as a mediator between our bodies and the environments that we operate in. The sculptural form that the gazebo grew a skin and bodies was inspired by the Glorieta or gazebo at the heart of Santa Clara, my hometown in Cuba. The Glorieta has stood witness to many generations of Santa Clara natives and features prominently in my early memories. Because the Glorieta is not as easily accessible to me now, I wanted to explore the notion of creating a modular form that can be reconfigured and relocated easily, a structure that provides shelter and stores memory and introspective moments at our convenience. This summer, I will be expanding on this project as an artist in residence at Josephine Sculpture Park, an opportunity facilitated through this award, where I hope to continue activating woven surfaces through the creation of interactive environments that recontextualize our surroundings into a soft and textile world. I would like to thank the International Sculpture Center for the recognition, their support, and this opportunity to share my work with you all. Thank you. This piece was made uh, in the fall of 2020, and it was right after my grandfather died. He made guitars and violins, and this is a rosette that I had picked out for a guitar that he was gonna make me. So I wanted to memorialize him through these objects that, you know, never got to become something. And this, this was a solid piece of wood, and I kind of embedded this sound hole with the decorative piece into it. I think it's also kind of about this American myth of making something from nothing. It almost looks like the guitar is being kind of mined out of this raw material. I do a lot of collecting, uh, you know, from thrift stores and like secondhand stores and any place, dumpsters. I, I kind of like to think that I'm giving my materials like a kind of afterlife, you know, where they they still carry kind of a association with what their their function was, but they can kind of say something a little bit different about uh, the values that they hold. I'm always really interested in repair as like a way of making something new rather than just like restoration. Um, I'm really trying to use repair as a kind of transformation process and sometimes a disorientation process.
in these pieces. I'm really grateful to the ISC uh, for the opportunity to share my work and the recognition. Um, that's amazing. I feel really lucky. Hi, my name is Alina Marie Brazier. I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois, and I will be discussing my practice, the winning piece, Passionate Desires, and what I'm doing today. Through a balance of visual abstraction and representation, I engage in the social, political, and historical experiences specific to Black Americans in the United States. Observing and questioning the physical world in conjunction with human behavior is an interest and process of mine in which I create through my sculptures. Here is Passionate Desires. It was an exploration of material, form, and color, and it began with me modeling it after a bobby pin. So bending two separate 10 foot long steel rods and then welding them together. And I had to figure out the composition of that and then weld the points together. After that, I used bags or bundles of synthetic hair that I purchased from the beauty supply store and began to use a process of separating that hair and then braiding it onto the steel rods. At different points, I added jumbo beads and began to leave the hair out. The jumbo beads are an accessory for hair that can go in the end or at any point of the hair. While creating this piece, the meaning was constantly changing and it kept finding itself with different words of ritual, spiritual, and culture and the piece began to shape itself. So after creating Passionate Desires, I began to make multiple pieces. So here is The Water Runs Deep and it is that same process of modeling after the bobby pin, bending, finding out a composition and welding the points together. Here I use black hair and blue hair. And then also I did not include any beads. For this piece, it is a wall installation that is overwhelming and invites the viewer into it. Here's pictures of what the piece looks like on scale and how people interact with it. After graduating with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Southern Illinois University of Edwardsville, I got accepted into Washington University Sam Fox School of Design and Visual Arts in St. Louis. So now I'm in my first year of graduate studies and in my second semester, and I am excited to produce more work and to see where my sculptures take me. So thank you for listening. Thank you to my faculty and mentor Thad Duhigg from SIUE, Southern Illinois University. Thank you to ISC and for always supporting the arts and sculpture. And here's my contact information. Alina Marie Brazier at gmail.com, Alina Brazier.com, and creator underscore Alina underscore Marie. Thank you. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. My name is Heidi Zenishek, and I was a recipient of the International Sculpture Center Outstanding Student Achievement in Contemporary Sculpture Award. <laughs> Of the recipients, I was fortunate enough to be chosen for the coinciding residency at Josephine Sculpture Park. Over the course of a month, I was able to install a permanent outdoor piece in the park. This piece became a part of the body of work that I created for my MFA thesis, titled Shoulder Deep. So I finally made it through the graduate school finish line at the end of 2021. And by 2022, I was in Iceland participating in a month long residency at Nez in Skagestrand. At the end of January, the residency culminated in a light art festival where I collaborated with Nicole J. Shaver on a handful of installations throughout the town. The following week, we installed another dichroic window mural in Reykjavik as a part of the Reykjavik Winter Lights Festival. After Reykjavik, we traveled to East Iceland, where I am currently making this video for you and working on a third installation for yet another light art festival in Seydisfjordur. After months of 24-hour darkness throughout the winter, these light festivals celebrate the return of the sun and the array of natural light phenomena witnessed throughout the year. 
At the exact time you're watching this, I will be somewhere in an airplane over Canada, returning to the United States to figure out the next of my post-MFA moves. Huge thanks to John Rupert at the University of Maryland for the nomination. And once again, thank you, thank you to the International Sculpture Center. <laughs> That'll be the end. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kylie Reese Little, and I am a recipient of the 2021 Outstanding Student Achievement in Contemporary Sculpture Award from the International Sculpture Center. I graduated from Georgia State University in May of 21 with an MFA in sculpture. This piece selected for Sculpture Magazine is titled Sweeping and was the second piece in my current body of work exploring my feeling toward and romanticization of physical labor. It was also included in my thesis exhibition called At Work. Sweeping includes a roughly 10 foot tall hand turned cherry structure that has four arms, three of which hold brooms that I inherited from my grandmother and my mother that were altered to fit the piece. Um, and one is a handle and the handle allows me to self propel the machine that turns in a circle as I push it. Um, it's also a site specific piece that was only used in my Atlanta apartment for two hours every Sunday for 10 weeks. I swept the same three circles rep repeatedly. Um, this inefficiency and uselessness feels important to me, and it has led me to question my personal relationship with busyness or lack thereof. I clocked in and out, which allowed time cards to keep some sort of record of this effort. And every piece in this body of work includes a uniform. Each began as a long khaki work jumpsuit that I altered to fit the task at hand and my body. Um, and I would put it on before every shift and take it off after every shift. I consider the machine itself, the uniform, the time cards, the broom holder, the dust, as well as the time and labor spent sweeping to all be a part of this piece and all essential to this piece. Since receiving the award, I have graduated, moved, started a new job, um, but I'm still continuing this body of work. And I'm incredibly thankful to ISC for the honor, as well as the opportunity to be featured in Sculpture Magazine, which is one of my favorite publications. Plus, it always means a lot when others see value in what you create. So. Thank you so much. My name is Anna Cruz and my piece, How Are You, was selected for the 2021 Student Achievement Award. First off, I wanna say a huge thank you to Emily Pudoff and Michael Asbill for nominating this piece. Um, I'm really grateful that it was selected to receive this award. The piece is really inspired by talk tubes on playgrounds. Um, I was interested in looking at different devices, equipment, um, objects that, that really manifest um, and embody the space between two people, as a lot of my work has to do with relationships and communication and intimacy, the ways in which we interact with each other. Um, this piece is an exploration of, of that communication, one side being quite open, um, able to to receive, but also to resonate that sound really well. The other side being a bit more closed off um, and then balanced together um, on this shared opening. Um, and so sound is able to travel through, through the device, but comes out both ends sounding a little different. And I think that it's successful in embodying this imbalance in relationships while also allowing the sound to, to travel through and, and come out a little different on each side. Um, the piece really isn't done until people use it, and I'm really interested in that, that sort of the interaction between two people that is through the sculpture itself, that the sculpture is functional, um, that it can be used, that that has a purpose, and it, it's, it's really exciting you know, to see 
bodies kind of disappear within within this object um, and to see it working. So again, thank you, thank you so much, and um, I'm really really honored to be selected for this.